the title of the conference is, is complicated, and it is. It's a mass of contradictions. It's very complex. And today I'm definitely not going to be offering any answers. I'm just going to raise a few questions and maybe frame the conversations moving forward. The title of my presentation is Becoming Sophia, a post-human manifesto for our time. So some of you are working on a manifesto, and I'm just going to raise some questions that you might want to reflect on. So I'm going to tell you a tale of two Sophias. And then I'll speak a little bit about the non-human human, open seas and closed doors, the Malta story. And then I'm going to speak a little bit about the neoliberal cosmopolitan, open seas and open doors, Again, the Malta story. And then I'm going to question, aren't we all data and all expendable? And then drawing a little bit on, well, actually quite heavily, on feminist critical post-human thought, so I'm going to be drawing on Haraway and Bray Dotti, I'm going to raise the question about us becoming Sophia, or those that want to and some suggestions for a manifesto for our times. So let me start with the tale of two Sophias. The little baby, it matches your outfit. If you want to use my slide as a backdrop, it looks amazing with your... <laughs> the little baby on the left is baby Sophia. We all know Sophia means wisdom, yeah? Baby Sophia's mum, I believe was Somali or Ethiopian, I, I don't recall. Baby Sophia was born on a German military vessel in the Mediterranean. She was born on this vessel because her mum was denied the possibility to travel in a legal and safe way. Now, many of you have traveled to come to Malta, and I'm assuming that you traveled legally without even thinking about it. You probably logged on, booked your flight, and over you come, and happy days, you're here. It's a basic human right that we take for granted. Operation Sophia was the EU Frontex mission responsible, as baby's namesake, because she was born on this military vessel, part of this um, strategy to prevent smuggling and trafficking in people, so baby Sophia was born there. The second image is the cyborg, Sophia, also called Sophia. And the cyborg, Sophia, was in Malta back in 2018, and there was a lot of commotion about cyborg Sophia. And whilst she was here, and we had a conference to welcome her, um, the parliamentary secretary, who is a ministry, minister today, for, I think he's responsible for uh, employment, anyway, he's a minister, he's an important person, um, said it's about time we start discussing citizenship rights for cyborgs. Happy days! <laughs> so two Sophias. I want to think about them a little bit differently. Two Sophias that occupy marginalized spaces, neither of them quite human, with a capital H. And I want to play a little bit with this liminal space. So this is the Vitruvian Man. I always want to say Leonardo DiCaprio. It isn't Leonardo DiCaprio that came up with this. The human human, with a capital H, at the center of the universe the human human, who historically determines personhood, citizenship, and access to rights, the right to rights, to cite Hannah Arendt. But of course, not all humans could occupy the center of the universe. There are those naturalized others, women, indigenous people, people of color, and so on, who are not up to the mark, not quite human humans. And what we see and what I see in my work all the time, and I made reference to it in the earlier session, is citizenship 
is that pathway, if you like, that demarks the right to personhood. And we have these intersecting vectors of power that affect and affect patriarchy, misogyny, racism, nationalism, who is and who is not quite human. Whoops, let's go back a bit. Okay, so most, although I'm an academic, I'm also an activist, and most of my work is focused on asylum seekers, not exclusively, but most of it on asylum seekers and refugees who have been crossing the Mediterranean for 20 years. It didn't start happening yesterday, so this whole notion of crisis is crap. There is no crisis beyond the, the crisis that we have constructed. As Gen Zers, you always know people crossing the Mediterranean in an illegal way. Illegal because they are forced to travel in an illegal way, because they are denied the possibility to travel in a safe and legal way. So they are criminalized, they are illegalized. The majority of them, the vast majority of them are Gen Zers. They're young people. It's a very dangerous journey to get here. Many die in the Sahara and many die in the Mediterranean. And I could spend hours just on this slide, but I won't. I'll just cite the most recent, but one of many reports by the Council of Europe and other international bodies. The conditions of detention and associated regimes for migrants deprived of their liberty appear to be bordering on inhuman and degrading treatment as a consequence of the institutional neglect. In Malta, we continue to detain people illegally, including children. And it's happening right now. Just last week, we had another court decision by another local magistrate saying this, was a, this, illegal, this detention was illegal. And then there's another Malta, what I'm calling the neoliberal cosmopolitan Malta. This is very much grounded in open borders. And I'll cite the former prime minister, but this policy has continued, who said, this government has made a choice. So this is Joseph Muscat back in 2018. We want to continue expanding our economy. We want to be a more cosmopolitan society. Our model is to open the doors and embrace the challenges of globalization. We want to be like that sailor who, at the first sign of strong winds, opens sails and not shies away. So we like globalization. We're saying we're here, and we're going to take those open seas, and we are going to expand. Economic expansion embraces the global movement of some bodies, though. Not all. Data, commodities, and technology, including Sophia the Cyborg. So we're out on the open seas. We're embracing, embracing plurality in search of profit and expansion, transcending boundaries. Um, but at the same time, there is massive economic, social, and environmental violence. So the question is, who and what is expendable? Who's enjoying this bounty? And how do these vectors of power intersect and affect people in different ways? We have an, an economy that is built on violence, exploitation, and precarity. And Gen Zers perhaps understand precarity more than any other generation. We have an economy that will exploit and profit from the knowledge generated by life all life, you are all expendable, just to different degrees. Information is capital, and all data will be mined, whoever it is and whatever it is. So in a sense, we're all in the same storm, not necessarily all in the same boat. So perhaps you're not quite the human human that you thought you were. You're capital, you're exploitable, expendable, and you too are facing extinction. That's the, uh, an image of the uh, rainforest fires of a few years ago. If I can just... The reason I use this image, just before COVID, the summer before COVID, 
I was stuck on the ref. I was, I was stuck on a tiny um, airport runway. It was a field, actually. We couldn't take off straight away because there was a cow on the field. Um, it was the runway at Kakuma Camp in Kenya, where I was working on a project with Film Aid with young refugees, the majority of whom, whom were born in the refugee camp, because our borders, the European borders, extend beyond our geographical boundaries. So you have these young people who were born in a camp and who have never left this camp. And I, you, you asked, so now I'm going to expand. And I was sat on the, tri on, on the um, plane, and I was flipping through. I didn't have access to Wi-Fi, so you know you just get like what you last uploaded. And the headlines were full um, of the, the um, Brazilian forest fires and European leaders attacking Brazil for not taking care of our lungs in Brazil. And the contradiction <laughs> for me was just nuts that I was visiting young people who were not allowed to transcend the border of their refugee camp because of national borders. And at the same time, the leaders responsible for upholding those borders were saying, our planet, our planet. So borders are also complex and often violent things. So I'm thinking, well, let's queer it up a bit. Let's decenter. How about we all occupy a liminal space, or at least an invitation for those who want to. Let's think beyond, let's live, let's be beyond binaries. Let's transcend these borders and become where we can, at least, untethered from the intersecting vectors of power that continue to affect and affect. Because you know what? To a certain degree, we're already entangled and enmeshed. We are human animals. We are enmeshed with ecologies, and we are already enmeshed with technology. So my question is this, what does it mean to be a young human human under the conditions of globalization, technoscience, late capitalism, and climate change? I can't answer that question. There are many, those historically denied personhood, the, nat the naturalized, racialized, gendered, sexualized other, who are already living, resisting, being digital, and transcending borders. They're already becoming Sophia. And I'll give you a couple of examples here of how young refugees, despite... This is a, a presentation based on hope, um, not defeat who, despite the obstacles and the violence that they face, transcend borders using tech to get them to a better place. Even in detention. This is an example of um, how they were in some young people were in detention with their mobile phones, and they were able to mobilize over social media and um, encourage others to mobilize on their behalf. And this is an occasion where it worked. And we have situations and examples of when it has worked. This is a report um, by Sea-Watch, if I recall. Um, they were compiling a report on the human rights violations within the centers. Of course, this isn't just a Maltese thing. I'm talking about the local context, but I'm sure that in each and every one of the countries that you come from, you have the same kind of problematic practices. But they compiled the report using WhatsApp and Facebook communications. There is subversion. They're mutineers. So my invitation to you all is to transcend boundaries and to come up with a manifesto for our times. A manifesto, I'm done, is a call to action. I encourage you to be bold, be brave, and be creative. As nature, culture, media, and tech morphs and fuses, the ape, let's get over ourselves, that's what we are, will continue to evolve. 
So my question is, what are we becoming? And this is something that I ask all of my students. It's not my job to tell you what you stand for. But I'm asking you, what do you stand for? What are the values that are going to shape the way, let me bring in behavior, you think and behave? And this is where philosophia comes in. Take responsibility, actively engage with the political, the economical, the social and cultural conditions that defines one's life, that's your situated life, context matters, but also transcend boundaries and borders. Be liminal, be both planetary and situated, embracing our codependency, human and non-human and cyborg. Negotiate spaces of resistance, and perhaps most importantly, please breathe hope into a manifesto for our times. Thank you.